Hello, trading enthusiasts. Get ready for a captivating session tonight. Our trading experts, John Carter, Allison Ostrander, and Cody Ashmore, are here to show you the missing key to small account growth. They'll be sharing the three keys to consistency most traders never learn until it's too late, as well as a very special offer on the small account blueprint that doubled Cody's 10K account in only 90 days. During the webinar, look out for interactive elements like polls and special offers that'll appear on your screen. Feel free to join the conversation with other participants in our chat panel on the left, or submit your queries in our Q&A panel on the right. Our knowledgeable moderator team, along with John, Cody, and Allison, will be ready to answer your questions at the end of the session. For your best viewing experience, please hover over the screen and click the top right corner to switch over to full screen mode if you prefer. All right, now let's go ahead and get this show on the road. John, Cody, and Allison, the stage is all yours. Mm-hmm. All right, awesome, Daryl. Thank you so much. As per usual, the your voice always puts me in a romantic mood, so that's a great way to <laughs> kick off the webinar. Glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, first of all, welcome everybody uh, for joining us tonight. It's always a uh, I know we all got a lot of things going on in our lives, so actually being able to kind of take a time out and uh, I guess, you know, take a vacation, either take a vacation or take a break from your day-to-day -to -day routine and talk a little bit about trading is always kind of fun. Plus, I always enjoy uh, talking with traders about what's going on. Of course, today we had the rate hike announcement, so we got another 25 basis point cuts. We're going to see if uh, Powell's just going to make us drive over a cliff or if he's going to keep the markets buoyant. And either way, no matter what happens, uh, what we're here to talk about tonight is strategies to take advantage of either market condition, um, especially if you're a newer trader or have a smaller account and just kind of be able to have kind of a blueprint to follow in that type of a situation. And I'm very excited to have uh, joining me tonight both uh, Cody and Allison, which I will uh, talk about a little bit more, but welcome. And uh, we'll try to, you know, usually these kind of things too, when you get a couple of people on here, sometimes we just kind of randomly go off and start talking about the markets, but we'll try to keep it focused because we've got a lot of we want to cover tonight and uh, we will go ahead and dive into this. So first of all, why listen to us? So uh, what I like about the three of us is we each bring a completely different dynamic uh, into trading, specifically for small accounts. Uh, based on our own personal history and experience. And so for me, it was like this eight year struggle of boom and bust. I've always been um, very capable of taking big risks for whatever reason. And so I would have great account growth, but then there'd be times I'd give it back and then great account growth and I'd give it back. And that was an eight year struggle. And when I finally figured out kind of the, you know, the secret to being a little bit more consistent, uh, that was something when my my trading really changed. And so that's something where I always say, like, look, if you want to go the eight years struggling frustration route, um, you know, where you got to hide your losses from your spouse and, you know, potentially throw up on a golf course because uh, you blew up an account again and you almost did, weren't able to buy a house. That's fine. But you don't have to. And so that's what we're here to talk about tonight, too. Um, I think it's really intriguing about Cody's story is that, you know, and this is always kind of a surreal thing for me. It's like I've just been kind of you know, the, my journey, my personal journey kind of motivated me to start simpler so that other people wouldn't have to go through those experiences. And so while I was doing that, Cody is off in Afghanistan, listening to classes that I'm doing and other people at simpler are doing, taking notes. Um, he's borrowing internet, uh, from, uh, a, a local Afghan that he met that had to run out and bring him, you know, kind of wireless service, which I thought was kind of fascinating. And the way that, the way that he learned is he brought a ton of discipline into trading and in fact has structured my own trading plan probably three to five times better uh, than what I did. So that's kind of fascinating. And then last but not least, we have Allison, who, of course, as a theater major, that'd be your first guess, right, that she would go into finance. But as a theater major, you've got to learn how to stay on your toes. Uh, you know, when you're in front of a live audience, you can't freeze. If you freeze, it just doesn't work. Just as in trading, when you freeze, it just doesn't work either. And she was able to take that experience and roll that into one of the most creative uh, risk mitigation option strategies that I've ever seen. And so I think you know the three combined factors there have been very, very interesting. So what are we going to cover tonight? And we'll each kind of go through one of these. So the, the first thing is, is why most traders struggle to grow small accounts? And it's the thing about it is it's not it's not hard to grow a small account when the market conditions 
um, are great for just buying calls. And so we saw a lot of that in, you know, 2020 and 2021. And then prior to that, 2016 was a great year like that. And there've been other years like that, but the easiest way to make money is this, if you've got a kind of a slow grinding uptrend, you just buy calls, Delta 70 calls, you roll them every two weeks, you've got specific setups and it's not that, you know, it's not necessarily hard to do as long as you understand the basics of it. The problem is the market's only like that about 25% of the time. What about the other 75% of the time when it's chopping, when it's volatile, when it's you know uh, sector rotation and, and different things like that? So those are some things, uh, the volatility that I found where even experienced traders are struggling to grow their account. They're kind of just main, you know, breaking even and newer traders are just getting chopped to bits. Um, Cody, why don't you go ahead and talk about a little bit about the missing key to growing a small account? Absolutely. So the missing key to growing a small account, in my opinion, is really, first off, if you have a small account, you can be typically new to trading. And to be quite honest, you need to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Hence, like the trading plan mentality. Like, you really need to know what you're doing and why you're going to do it and how you're going to manage it before the emotions even hit you. And on top of that would be really um, portfolio management, risk management, like um, Allison will be talking about here. But that is what I really believe is a key is really knowing what you're what to do when to do it and how to do it that makes a lot of sense too and i, and I think another aspect of this too allison and maybe you can talk about this a little bit is the uh, i know before especially when i've done classes you know a lot of it's just kind of you know regurgitated onto the onto the page and then everybody kind of has to take that and, and 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 work with it the best they can i didn't necessarily have what i would say the most structured approach um but with this we're kind of looking at more of a paint by numbers approach do you want to talk a little bit about that yeah, so there's a lot of components that's going to be going into this, right? We have the psychology side from JC and all of those uh, heartburns that he took growing and then ungrowing his account several times. You're you wrong. have the strict discipline of Cody's trading plan, where it's really step by, by step. It's almost like robotic in the sense that you have all the ticks that you need to mark off to jump into the strategy. You then do so if it cancels out, right? If it breaks, you get out. And so there's not much thinking or emotion behind it. You can almost just let it go automated with how he's set that up. And then, of course, I'll come in with the risk aspect and really dive into that. Because at least from my perspective, I think that's one of the hardest things for traders to really get a good grasp on. It's easy to become emotional when you've had a great winning streak. And it's also easy to get emotional and almost freeze, like John mentioned, when you get into a losing streak on when you should jump in, when you should jump out, right? When to take profits, when to cut a trade, and also setting up that risk for the account so you're never overblowing it. Um, and then certainly, of course, with this, there will be a special class that I've already pre-recorded. It's a brand new class. I've never done it before. Um, going over my strategies as well for growing the small account. So you're getting a lot out of this um, and all the components and how they tie together in order to make it one solid plan to really work off of. Yeah. And you brought up a good point too, or it's very common. What I've seen is in the beginning, traders usually do pretty good because they don't know any better. They're in a perfect state of mind, which is kind of neutral. And then they have some success and get overconfident. And then that's when bad things happen. And so that's where it's really important to have that risk control to kind of have that steady kind of a performance. Otherwise, you know, emotionally it can cause people to kind of freeze, lose confidence in themselves, give up and which is not necessary. And so I, I think you're reading my diary from the start of my trading. Journey, John. <laughs> Dear diary. <laughs> That's not creepy. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. um, and then also, too, we're going to talk a little bit about your $500 challenge, Allison. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So the $500 challenge, for those of you who don't know, it's something that I've been doing uh, a lot the last couple of years, where basically I'll start the month only risking $500. And a part of that is for younger people, maybe people with a tighter budget to show them that they don't necessarily need a lot. You don't need a Warren Buffett, John Carter size account in order to trade and grow it successfully. Um, but at the same time, to really teach them and hone in on risk. We never put that 500 into one trade. It's always broken apart between multiple trades. Uh, the normal risk tolerance that I put on per trade is like $150 or less. I think the most I ever risked last year, for example, was $222. And that was after already growing the account some. 
Because I think if you can really get a good grasp on capital risk and risk first reward trading a $500 account, then it's a lot easier to then build that up and to be able to use it in a larger account, like 5,000, 50,000, 500,000. And that way you can really get a good grasp of never over risking your account and still show you ways that you can grow it successfully. And like last year, for example, not every trade was a winner. Every month was a winner, but we never lost the full $500 within a month's time frame. And by the end of the year, we still grew the account over 460% return. So certainly not a bad return when you have a good grasp on the risk versus reward where the idea is the winners can still offset those losers and keep you net ahead. No, that makes a lot of sense. And I think it's, it'd be a lot of fun for a lot of people. I initially thought the $500 challenge was more travel related. Like, can you find <laughs> an airline seat for less than $500 today? But, um, Easy job. I like I like your version better. <laughs> All right. So who is this for? Um, really, it's, you know, there's there's three groups that we had in mind in deciding to work on this together. And the first thing, of course, is new traders. So if you're a new trader, you can go out on your own and kind of if you want to mimic my journey, which was eight years of uh, joy and hell all wrapped up into one. Um, it's you know, it's it's fun, but it does cause some emotional scars and not everybody needs to do that. So I think that part of this is just going like, hey, these are the things that you can do right away. So you don't have to experience that. Like, you know, it's not necessary. And then um, so I think that that's really important because one of the things in in trading, it's a lot like golf. So in golf, let's say that, you know, you're at work and your boss says, you know, hey, Tom, uh, you know, Chad dropped out of our foursome. Do you want to join us on Monday? You know, and, and you're, you know, likely you're going to be like, yeah, you want to take advantage of the opportunity and you've never played golf before. So if you spend the whole weekend reading books on playing golf and then you show up there having never swung a club, how are you going to do? You know, you probably know more about golf than them, but when it comes to execution, you're not able to do it. And I find that's very common in trading that a lot of times, you know, I'll talk to people that know a lot more about options than me, but I've played so many more trades than them. I've swung the club so much more. Um, and that makes a big difference. And so the idea with this is that you want to be able to start swinging that club the right way right away uh, instead of learning some bad habits. And I think that helps a lot. Um, the other thing, too, and this is kind of, um, you know, we say traders who have small accounts and, and sometimes people ask, well, what does it matter what size account you have? Can't you still take the trade? The answer is no. If you've got a hundred thousand dollar account or larger, you can do all kinds of trades that you can't do in a small account, whether it's buying deep in the money calls on a stock like Tesla or taking up more margin to do wider, you know, iron flies and different things like that. And then above that, there's what's called portfolio margin. You could do even more fancy things in portfolio margin that you could never do in a small account. So a small account has limitations and you want to learn what those limitations are, but also take advantage of them. So there are strategies that work great for small accounts that guess what? Sometimes the big accounts can't do uh, because of liquidity issues. So, you know, you know, you want to take advantage of that. And then last but not least, you know, trading is hard and sometimes it's easy to get rusty. And this is kind of a chance for a reboot. You know, if you're feeling kind of lethargic about trading or frustrated about trading, or I always joke, pardon my French, but sometimes people go through a phrase, a phase where everything they touch turns to shit. Um, and, and sometimes you just need a reboot. And that's also kind of what this is designed for as well. And so I think that's, you know, that's important. So, so the first step in this whole process is really just kind of understanding what you're up against in the markets. And if you're not aware of this, you know, I, what I call, what I mean is that like, if you go, if you go unconscious in the markets, uh, the markets will suck you in immediately. And this, and this will be kind of, kind of goes like this. You get in, you're excited and you get that moment of euphoria because the trade's working out and then it starts to kind of come back and maybe you add to it. And then you kind of, there's this fear, depression, panic, capitulation. And then lo and behold, by the time you can't take the pain and suffering anymore and you get out of this trade, you know, oh, I'm not going to do this again. It miraculously reverses and starts to rally. And the market is designed to do this. It's actually designed the way the markets work is it tries to get the most people to lose the most amount of money. That's the only way the markets can move. If everybody was making money, we would just drift higher all the time. And that's, it just, the markets can't survive like that. So it's important that the markets are designed to trick you. 
like that that's the whole aim is to shake you out and to trick you. And so you want to understand that that's happening and then you want your setups to incorporate that so that when you're getting in, you're getting in when other people are getting hurt. Okay. I know, I know that sounds horrible, but that's just kind of the nature of trading. And just as the same thing, when people here are euphoric because they're just getting in, you're, you're on the opposite side of that. You're either taking profits at that point, we call it feeding the ducks or you're shorting or, or whatever it is. So you got to understand this because if you don't, you know, you're either playing the markets or you're getting played by the markets and it's, it's one or the other. And so at the first, you know, that's something that I, it's passion, I'm passionate about and something that I'll be talking a lot about uh, during our class together. And then in terms of a struggle, you know, and I talked about this where, you know, for eight years, I was kind of this boom and bust. And I did one thing I did well is that when I would take 10,000 and get it up to like 120, I'd take out 20 and buy real estate. And then I'd take that hundred and say, okay, I'm going to run this up to a million. And that's when I always encountered problems. And part of that's upper limit problems with money. You know, that's a whole psych psychological thing that I'll talk about. Um, and then part of it too, is just the mentality of when you start chasing the money, all these bad habits start coming into play. But when you just focus on setups, when you focus on kind of your paint by numbers approach, when it's spelled out for you and you stick to it and you have the discipline to stick to it, the money takes care of itself. And that's really a big, a big part of that. And, that's kind of what changed the game for me anyway. You've just got to understand how the markets move, um, understanding how they take advantage of you because they're designed to, and then being able to recognize that and get on the other side of it. So, um, and, and, the, and the other thing about this is people ask is like, well, what's your goal? It's like, what's your goal for a return? Is it like 20%? If my goal is 20%, I wouldn't trade. Like I would just put my money in an index fund and forget about it. When you're trading, I think generally your minimum goal is 100%. And I've had, you know, 2020, I just a 1,200% return. And some years have been, um, that was probably the best year in terms of the amount of money. But then there's some years that have, you know, been it's, it's, a, it's like 100%. There have been years in the past where it's like, wow, that didn't, that year didn't work out very well. So it just kind of, you know, but once you kind of get everything in order, the, I would say a minimum goal uh, is 100% return. And then as Allison said with hers, it was like, oh, that was 460%. So, but we're not talking about, you know, trying to crank out 20% a year. We want to do more than that. Um, the other thing too, that I think is super important, and this is something that took me a long time to figure out, uh, the trade that you're in right now doesn't matter at all. And on, on a, on a scale of one to 10, it's a two in terms of importance, but everybody, I, almost everybody I talk to on a scale of one to 10, it's a nine or a 10. Like this is the trade. This is the one that's, it's causing them stress. Um, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with this? Instead, manage your account balance. And so what I mean by that is if you've got a $10,000 account and you know over the last month it's run up to 12,500, the only thing that matters at this point is your account balance because your only job as a trader is to have an account that goes from the lower left of your screen to the upper right. You know, it's kind of steadily rising. So when you're looking at something like this and your account's at 12,500 and you have trades that aren't working out, but it drops to like say 11,750, your trades are irrelevant. It's your account balance that you want to save. You cut everything loose. You cut everything loose and reset and start again, no matter what the trades are doing, because you're managing your account balance, not the individual trade so much. And I think that's so important. And the idea with this is we want to try to keep things simple. Uh, my favorite way to trade is directional. If I think if I get a signal that the market's going up, I want to buy a call. If I get a signal that the market's going to go down, I'd like to buy a put. But it's also important to understand that that works about 20% of the time. The other 80% of the time, you do want to understand things like spreads and iron condors and a few things like that and um, being able to know when to do that and when it's appropriate. All right. So with that, I would like to turn this over to Cody. And you know, I mentioned this before. I just thought it was great how he was sitting there trying to learn, um, you know, and I, I picture Cody, and I don't know if this is totally accurate, but you're like a, in a tent in the desert, you know, <laughs> trying to trying to listen to a class that's being played and asking questions and making sure that the Wi-Fi connection is there. And then, uh, but what's amazing about this too is, you know, in, in some form in working with the military, either within the, in the military or with contractors outside the military for 13 years, um, and in talking to Cody, it brought a lot of discipline to his approach. And it's something that I appreciate because it's like, I'm, I'm kind of more of a, let's dive in and see what happens. And that's great in some instances, but for the long term, you want, you want the disciplined approach. And he's organized my trading setups probably five times better than what I have, because everything I have is kind of in here and he's got it, you know, out here so he can study it and he can share that with you. Anyway, Cody, let me turn this over to you. 
All right. Hello, everybody. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. First off, uh, you do kind of have a wrong JC. Afghanistan is actually more mountainy versus desert. Iraq is desert. Afghanistan mountainy. But hey, now we next know. Time I go, next time I go there, I'll know the difference. <laughs> so he's That's... rock climbing while trading. That's what he's trying to say. <laughs> I like that better. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you look at that picture right to everybody, like that little computer in the background, I was actually in the original small account uh, mastery class and all that stuff. And that's where I was learning to trade there, um, right down a little spot, you know? And so like we're saying, discipline and trading. And for me personally, if I ever want to know something deep about myself that I really don't know, um, I actually asked my wife, I'm like, and I asked her, I was also, why do you think I'm always so like plan oriented? Like what is, what, what about me makes me do that? And it's the, and I, she was like, well, it's just every single career choice you've done in your life. And it's kind of interesting. And I want to mention this to y'all because, um, so first off, uh, like before I was a contractor and a medic and all that stuff, um, I was a Marine and um, I was a squad leader, team leader. Um, I was an instructor in various courses and um, everything had to be planned out. I was given a task. I literally had to plan out missions in uh, Iraq and stuff, like all the way up to astronautical data to know how much moonlight and starlight can be out. So I know if we can move around, things like that. All the way down to this picture right here, when, as I was a contractor, I was the the lead medic or medic in charge where um, in the, so like during the evacuation, I was in charge of making sure we had pre-plotted um, landing zones in the event of stuff was to kick off. Dude, I coordinate all our medical supplies. Did I plan everything? I basically planned everything in a sense of like your life depended on it. And I took trading to that approach. I took trading as if my life depended on it. And for me, and some of you as well, it may also be like your life depended on it simply because for me, my way to get out of what I call this vortex of once you start doing um, this overseas type of work, you get the big paychecks and all that stuff, you kind of get stuck there. For me, trading was my way out to be with my family, so I traded it like my life depended on it. And so that was my approach to trading. And so let's continue on here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So oh, that's a good question here as well. I'll answer that. So if you work a full-time uh, demanding job, how can uh, can you still participate in this? I'm gonna say absolutely. If I did it in a location where internet wasn't always available, uh, sometimes our electricity. There was a summer where I had no electricity, like literally. I just lived in a condensed box, um, and it, during the summer it was not great. But it, you know, builds memories. It makes you strong. But uh, anyways, so if I could do it in those type of environments. I believe anyone could do this if you have a full-time job. Typically, in my setups, I'm in position within the first hour or two. Anything past that, I'm really not looking to get in because I my planning is so precise. I already have my targets up that I want. I just wait for my sites to line up and I take the shot. One thing I'd mentioned too, Cody, about you know, can you do this trading full-time? I was teaching myself to trade while working full-time and – to check quotes, I had to hide in an office and call to see what this quote was. Whereas now, you know, we can send push notifications via iPhone or Android, which is amazing. So That's I would crazy, say it's right? way, way easier to do that today than it was, you know, back back when I was doing it. But uh, so, I mean, yeah, it just so that's that's a huge thing. Absolutely. I can only imagine it. Um, I've read that book, up, um, Stock Operator, with the reminiscences of a stock operator, where he mm -hmm. talks about you had to go and make a phone call just to hear what a stock was at. Mm -hmm. That's a... Uh, Obviously, way down the line, but that's uh, <laughs> fairly intense. <laughs> um, but let's talk about this uh, PL here. Um, so, um, this is uh, my gross community PL over the last 90 days of a small account. I took 10,000. I was like, all right, I want to really push it. And it's just like what JC was second, saying a second ago, um, all about managing your portfolio versus the trades. And it wasn't until I actually started applying that methodology is when I really saw a ramp up in my graph, which mm -hmm. you kind of see here. And, um, and that's something I've kind of actually I have to say, thank you, JC, for teaching me that. But, <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, so that's off uh, 10 grand. And we'll move here to the stats right here. Like I said, I took 10 grand and made it about 100% in 90 days and um, was risking about 10 to 15%. Um, and so the question may be like, do you need $10,000 for this type of strategy? Um, I'm going to say no. Um, all that really matters is I would say a minimum of at least $2,000. And then after that, it comes on to how much risk you're willing to accept on each trade. For me, don't, I have never blown an account, but that is only because I never put more into a trade than I'm willing to go to zero. And that is honestly how I keep my emotions cool and I follow through with the plan. But that being said, it's all adjustable. It's all on the risk tolerance that you have. 
And as far as the stats here, what I'm going to point out here is that I had about a 65% success rate. Um, my profit factor, that is your risk to reward. So every for, for every $1 I was losing, I was making about $2.70 on. And as far as like how long are, am I into these trades, the days to expirations uh, vary. But typically, I mean, it tells you right here, the stats right here, I'm in, I'm fucking up winning trades within three days or I'm getting out of a losing trade within three days. So typically in three days, I'm either right or I'm wrong. It's quick, manage, quick aggressive management. And that typically works. And look, if it's a scratch, it was only five days. So I gave it a chance to work. And just like I, if you've uh, listened to JC talk before, he talks about pruning. That's aggressive pruning right there. You call me the gardener. Mm. <laughs> All right. So what strategies do I typically use? And these are, I tip, um, in this course, I do three everyday price action um, everyday price action movement. And then Allison covers two in hers. Um, but I covered the squeeze, just like an all time simpler favorite, a continuation long and short, and then within the expected move, just three uh, strategies that you just rinse and repeat that happen almost uh, every day. All right, so here's just a quick trade example. This is a long continuation trade that we did in the small account mentorship here recently. And what I really want to point out to it is, first off, it kind of looks just like that emotional graph that JC talked about earlier, right? We're coming in and buying people's despondence. And it's not really, okay, you came in and buy the, you bought the dip, cool. What I really want to focus on is it's more of like, how was I prepared and ready to strike? And how did I know where my targets were before it potentially rolled back over? And it all was on preparation and the trading plan. And this is just the outcome that came out on it. And we ended up doing, um, I believe it was a Brooklyn Butterfly, got in for 128 and ended up locking it up for about $2.30. All right, and so we, I do take losses, right? And um, we had our setup here. This is another continuation long setup, and it didn't work. It's quick, aggressive, and it hit my stop loss parameters. So we got in right here and then got out the next day, actually, because it stopped us out. Small little loss, about 30% loss on the trade. Um, but yeah, losses happen. And in the hindsight, we were talking about this earlier, um, obviously would have worked out, but that's always in uh, hindsight. It doesn't always all work I'm out. An, I'm an awesome hindsight trader. The best. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> all right, here's another one. Uh, same thing, another continuation long example. And same, I, I'm sure you can see the pattern here. Came in, we bought this dip right here. It was in our entry zone scaled out at our targets and got out before it pulled back again and got into position for $2.20 and locked it up for $3.50. And it's the same thing, same emotional uh, thing occurring over and over. So here is a different setup here. This is a within the expected move, right? So if price is either expanding which is basically a squeeze, or price is reverting to the mean, or price is consolidating, right? If uh, price is consolidating and going sideways, we can take advantage of that as well. And this is uh, what I call within the expected move trade. Basically, we entered a iron condor here with certain parameters hit. And you can see that we got in for $1.50, and then four days later, locked it up for $0.90, cents, which was 40% uh, of the credit received. Yeah, Cody, one thing I like about your trades, too, is that it's not a necessarily a day trade, but this kind of three to four day range and, you know, kind of, you know, these kind of quicker gains or quicker losses. You know, it's I see a lot of times where somebody gets into a trade and like three weeks later, they're still talking about it when they should have gotten out of it two weeks prior. And you're just it's just moving on. And that's such an important thing. Just, you know, it's working great. Hold on for it. And if it's not cut it loose, but you can always move on to the next setup. And that's way better than you know hoping and praying that the one that you know isn't quite working out may actually recover absolutely i mean that's um so uh me and my family went down to the beach uh, a few weeks or last week or so and uh like you say all the time like you're not it's not always going to work out you're not going to touch all the water or there's always another wave coming right and my son that is eight, like he was upset that he had missed a wave or the one that he got on didn't quite work out the way he thought and uh he was, and I was like, it's all right. There was always another wave. And then he looked at me dead in the eyes and goes, that was, that's just like your work. Like he doesn't know what I do. He just knows I repeat things from work. And he was just like, it's just like work. There's another wave. And then on his mind, he's like, oh, I'll be patient for the next one. 
So it was really cool to see that play out. But yeah, absolutely. Um, multiple different ways to uh, do this. I do see another question coming on here. All right. So as far as type of trades being done and options, it's I typically do it all. Um, it's either going to be, uh, for the most part, a vertical spread um, of debit or credit, uh, iron condor. And But if you want to do just long calls and puts, ultimately, if you have a bullish thesis, then just you do whatever fashion you wish to do it on. Ultimately, what matters is what the mass risk is. And then your profit is going to vary based on the type of options position you put on. But nonetheless, it's still all play out. And what's most important is, does it make sense to you? All right. So when we talk about the dark side, there's only one person that comes to mind. And it's not <laughs> Star Wars. And I'm not even kidding. It is Alison Ostrander. And I'm going to go ahead and let her take it away on the dark side because we don't want to go there. I swear I'm not an apprentice of Emperor Palpatine or anything. Okay? <laughs> I'm on the Jedi mind path. No, in all seriousness, guys. So um, a little bit about myself. I, you know, like John mentioned, was a theater major. No financial background whatsoever. Uh, and my dad actually came to me with the idea of trading. He tried to get all of us kids involved. And certainly at the time, it sounded much better than waiting tables. So I was down. Um, and I started, you know, watching webinars online. I paper traded to see if I had at least some sort of grasp at what I was doing. And then once I kind of grew that paper account, I decided to invest in some education, some one-on-one -on -one coaching. And in my first real money trade, I completely paid for all my education fees, my coaching fees, and was still net and head an overall profit. And so from that moment, I was hooked. Trading became a second passion of mine. And I was actually on a good little winning streak for a while. But there was this dark side of trading. That's what I like to call it kind of bubbling under the surface. And maybe some of you guys have run into the same issues I know I have when I first started trading, which is I start to have too many trades on, right? I get emotional about that. I lose lack of sleep due to how much risk is out there. So I start tracking the futures. I start tracking global markets. And then of course that lack of sleep even builds further into the emotions. I start to throw out the trading plan I had. I start trading off of hopium, hoping something will work out, cost averaging it to death when I should have just gotten out of the trade um, or, you know, debating, right? Should I take the profit now? Should I get out? Should I jump into And it was easy, right? It's easy to jump into the trade, but then it was much harder to try and close it out and take that profit. And so all of these different, you know, dark aspects of trading was something I didn't like, but I was like, okay, I'm still profitable. I'm still, you know, doing good. There's a lot I love about trading, but then I took my first big loss and it completely blew me out of the water. I was surprised about how much on the profit side I gave back. And it really like intensified that dark side of trading to the point where I took a step back and I was like, okay, I never want to have this happen again how did I get into this situation? I should know better, right? My paper trading did well. The start of my trading journey did good. How did I find myself in this situation? And so whenever I dove deeper into it, I realized that all of these negative aspects, including what led into that huge loss, they all stemmed from risk. And it was, what is my personal risk tolerance, right? What does that mean for my overall account? What does that mean per trade for my account? What does that mean on the risk versus reward scenario per trade, right? There's a whole bunch of different aspects of risk to consider when you first implement a trade. And when I realized that's where the source of this dark side came from, I completely switched gears and made risk my entire focus. And so now every time I look to put on a trade, I'm always gauging that risk aspect and what it means, not only for the overall account, but what it means for the individual trade setup too. And so it's led me to develop a lot of different strategies. One of those being the profit recycling strategy. I did see a question mentioned asking, well, how do you avoid the pattern day trading rules? Well, I actually created the profit recycling strategy to do just that. Um, and I've built it into the beast that it is today because it is one of my favorite go-to strategies. But it's a great way to avoid the pattern day trading rule and still take advantage of intraday moves, ideally completely covering your risk, and then still setting up for 
some bonus trades in the future. And that's something that I teach um, all throughout the small account mentorship, as well as within the upcoming class that I did that is brand new as an added bonus. And then, of course, my life changed, right? I had kids and I realized that as much time as I spent in front of the screen, I couldn't quite do that anymore. And so it had me once again kind of adjusting the different strategies that I use. So that way I don't have to spend 24 seven in front of my computer, right? If you have another job or if you're a mom or dad too, right? Taking care of the kids at home. I know certainly that was a struggle during COVID or perhaps you're in retirement mode. You're like, I'm going to the beach. I want to be on the golf course. I don't want to spend my time in front of the computer. Well, there's a great way that we've been able to make these strategies. So that way you don't have to always be there in order to still participate with the market. Um, and they're for a certainly lower risk, high profit potential strategies. So that way, if you end up missing or losing one, the idea once again is one winner can help pay off multiple losers and still try and keep you net ahead. And so I know the juggling aspect can be hard. Certainly but there are ways to be able to trade around it, even if you have limited time in front of the market. Um, and so I, we talked a little bit about my $500 challenge account earlier. This is one of the trades that we did this year on it. It was in Microsoft. It was a beautiful pullback entry, had a lot of technical signals that I like to look at that were setting up nicely for a bullish aspect, but it took a little bit to get going, right? So we kind of struggled there for a bit, but on the day of expiration, we got the pop, we got the follow through that we are looking for. And so I very early in the day, I took the quick 50% win because once again, my whole focus is on risk. The trade was down earlier. So I was very happy to recoup my capital, lock in the quick profit. But I know if you held it a little bit later in the day, it ended up hitting that 100, 200% return um, on the original capital risk. So either way, <laughs> always happy with the cash in hand, certainly. Uh, but it was a very nice winner for some of you guys who took it. And then here's a trade that we did on NDX. This was actually taken off the 10 minute chart. We filled it in like, about 20 minutes, maybe a little less than that. So we are very quick trade. Uh, but this is an example of profit recycling. And so what we did is we basically locked in a 40 cent profit overall. We had completely covered the initial risk out there. And then we had a nice bonus trade set up for the close. And this is cash settled. So as long as we let it go into expiration, there was no risk of assignment. There was no pattern day trading rule being hit. And so profit recycling, like I mentioned, can really set up for fun bonus trades, all while still being mindful of risk um, in the short term and the long term, depending on what time frame you're looking at. It still blows my mind how you do that, literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's I remember impressive. coming in John's office and I was like explaining to him and he was just kind of like, Wait, what? Like, yeah. I don't. It's impressive. I, I was not expecting the words that came out of your mouth. I'm like, girl, say it again. Surprise, theater major. <laughs> um, and then another trade that we did also profit recycling, actually, this one was on Meta. It was a bit more of a swing trade, had all the signals that we were looking for. So we put it on, held it through earnings, had that beautiful pop in earnings. Um, and so we started profit recycling it. And the idea is once again, we're locking in profits, we're reducing capital risk, building into bonus trades. At one point we had our risk completely covered and then it was just fun continuing to lock in more profits along the way. And at the end of the trade, when everything it was closed out and said and done, we ended up with a $13.31 profit, which was over a 1,039% uh, return on risk. So once again, that's the kind of idea, right? You set up trades where you're reducing that overall risk, but also allowing yourself an excellent risk first reward scenario where this trade, right, ended up paying for several losers in the account and still kept us net ahead overall. And so... Uh, like, uh, you know, we've talked about here, there's a lot of different components that go into trading. Uh, John comes in with the mindset. Cody comes in with the ACE trading plan. I talk about that risk management. And so, John, I'll leave it to you to talk a little bit more about that psychology aspect, if you will, of trading and why that's so important. Yeah, no, and I just I just see this so much. And of course, a large part of my journey and uh, was psych the psychology part of it. And I, you know, I, I I had the privilege of befriending Mark Douglas. In fact, 
was working with him and spoke with him. I think it was two weeks before he passed. And this was, you know, a while ago now, but it was, uh, um, but it was great. Cause I would get in trades. He said, look, get into some trades live and then call me and like, okay. And then we'd just kind of, you know, he would talk through kind of like what's going on and stuff like that. And it just, even over time, cause even after I was able to kind of get a handle of the psychology of my own trading, I then had to learn the psychology of trading in front of a group, you know, cause that's a little different too. And you know, all the different hidden agendas that can sneak in there, but it's such a key component of it. But then what's interesting about this is that the way Cody has put together a trading plan, um, he he's almost made it less important if you just follow it. And uh, that's the biggest thing I see is I get, I see a lot of smart people get into trading and they have a loose trading plan. And the loose trading plan is based on, well, I'll use my best judgment because I'm, you know, I'm a smart person. And that's, that's what gets a lot of people into trouble too. And so just by having that, you know, that just that, you know, as Cody said, he's like, he had to put together checklists as if his life depended on it. And he brought that into trading. I mean, you can't really get anything better than that. And then the risk management piece, I mean, you know, Allison stuff blew me away there. And it's stuff that you can just kind of learn in your own trading. And the idea that you have to take a lot of risk to make money, you know, that's just something that, you know, Allison just kind of turned on, turned, turned on its head. And so I think it's really just important to understand that. She said, hold my beer. <laughs> so, and so what we want to do is we just want to, we're here to tie this all together because it's, like I said, you know, and, and Cody's taken my stuff and made it better. Allison brings in the element of risk control that is beyond anything that I'd ever done. You know, I was like, oh, if I want to make a lot of money, I got to risk a lot of money, right? No, you don't. And then just kind of tying that together with the psychology pieces, just understanding, you know, these are the things to look out for. These are the, th you know, these are the important things to do, you know, if you've had a down streak or more importantly, a winning streak. And just kind of, you know, take that time and don't push it too much. And a lot in the past, we've done classes like this, but they've been separate. And this is the first time we're kind of just, you know, bringing it all together under run, run, one roof, uh, one roof. So um, um, <laughs> with work. that, yeah, it's a so with that, I'm uh, happy to just kind of present. We've got this. It's called a, it's a small account mentorship. It's the this thing that we've been working on for like the last couple of years and just trying to bring it to a place where how is this going to help the most people? You know, we've had a lot of feedback and a lot of learnings. How is this going to help the most people right now, right in these market conditions? And you know, we can see the pieces that were missing before. It was not, you know, not having rigid plans like your life dependent on it, you know, really making sure that the psychology was understood, you know, after a winning streak or after a losing streak and bringing all these things so that this is something that can work for you today in this market. And the market's going to change and it can work in that market as well. Um, I think a lot of people got disheartened after, you know, it's like, gosh, 2020 and 2021, it was so easy. But when the markets change, then that's when the discipline comes into play. I mean, you know, it's easy to kind of, you know, you get a market like like 2020 and you don't need skill. You buy, you know, you, you got the trend right and the market bails you out. So sometimes you get a great setup and it works and other times, you know, it's like, wow, this didn't work, but the market is so strong, it just bails you out. And that creates this very, very false sense of how the markets work and confidence. And so it's, it's, it's just important to understand, you know, all of that. So, what we're going to be working on together and we've got a, a kind of a small lot process uh, being re being launched here by, by Cody and Allison. And I'm kind of coming on to help with the psychology part of it. And, and, you know, all the setups that I use Cody's using even better now. So it makes it great. So the couple of things that we've got working on here is uh, the first one. And most important is that we've got a basic package that we put together and there's a couple of different things here to think about. One, if you're new to all this and thinking like, wait a minute, I've, this is the first time I've seen you guys, you know, what's going on here? That's what the basic package is to get you up and running. So with the basic package for $597, and I always kind of look at it as a small investment. I always think of things like if I'm trading one lot, how long is it going to take for me to make the money to get a return on this investment? So I think that's pretty reasonable. So with this, we're going to be doing a class this upcoming Saturday. And that will be, it's a five, approximately five hour class. Um, Allison will talk about her strategies. Um, Cody's going to be talking about kind of the strategies that, that I had that he's improved on. I'll be talking about the psychology part of it. And um, this price is good up until the class starts. So the class starts, I think, Saturday, this upcoming Saturday, uh, July 29th at 12 noon. 
And so that price will be good until then. After that, uh, the price is going up once it goes into our store. Uh, for those of you that are newer, we also have some utility labels. These are key labels that we put on, on charts just to kind of help with our checklist portion of the trades. And then we've also gotten, you know, this is something I think is really important. I talked earlier about the golf analogy. You know, you can read all the books you want, but if you're not actually swinging the club in front of a professional, you're not going to get any good at golf. And so this also includes 90 day access to our ongoing mentorship program. And so what does that mean? That means you'll get alerts for trades that follow the setups that are discussed in the class. You'll be able to ask questions. You'll be able to ask questions about, oh, what about this symbol? Does this fit? Different things like that. And I think that's just, that's priceless. And there'll also be a workbook with that. So that's the basic package. And then in the elite package, you'll notice here that for uh, again, an investment of 1997, kind of in yourself and your future. Um, you're getting all of that. And then the only main difference here is that instead of 90 days, you're getting a full year. Okay, so that that's that's you're committing. You know, you're like, okay, I'm I am ready to make this change and make this stuff work. And you're gonna and you're ready to commit to that. This also includes a five day small account boot camp. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, Allison, she's gonna have her small account strategy recordings. We'll talk more about that. I'm going to ask you what office hours is, Allison, because I'm not really sure, but we'll get to that on that slide. And then um, I'm also going to be doing uh, six bonus sessions talking about, you know, some psychology and market stuff as well, which I think will be really cool. All right, I'm going to leave all those markings on there and then let's go to. Um, OK, so. Uh, someone had asked too. Well, what are, what are these? What are these six sessions? And so, basically, like once a month, uh, we're going to sit down and take some time together and just kind of review the market. You know, what's been what's been a challenge? What are the things to look for in the in the in the days and the weeks ahead? And part of this is that I've been watching the markets pretty actively since the mid '90s, and so I've seen a lot and have recognized uh, can recognize a lot of things in terms of like you know okay yeah this is the kind of things that we want to focus on and just trying to bring that experience into the forefront of what you're doing as well and you know i think that i think that can help a lot hey jc i'm gonna interrupt you for a second there can we go back uh, sure all right so i want y'all to understand how much of a privilege that is so i want to put y'all in my shoes when i was overseas like i was in the small account secrets and stuff like that in the small account mastery and look at me now Right. And the reason for that is, first off, I was every live session. If I could be there, I was hitting with questions. I was looking to understand. I wasn't looking for trades. I wanted to understand what was happening, how I could build myself on it versus, hey, make me money. So that being said, this is a great opportunity for you to ask the man. Like, let's think about it. This man owns kangaroos and giraffes. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like. I mean, come on. We've all seen them do the million dollar trades. Like they're all documented. And this is a way to talk. I won't say one on one because you're in a group setting, but you can ask the man himself a question that has been there and done that. I think this is great value for everybody. Well, I appreciate it, Cody. And it's it is a uh, it it, it I, I always enjoy hearing about other traders' experiences. And so, and I think it's you know I always kind of look at it like, hey, I'm just sharing what I know. And you know, it's uh, sometimes I forget it's been a lot. So thanks. Yeah, you know, thanks for the. <laughs> The kind words. Um, now, the other thing with this, too, I didn't think I mentioned this earlier. If you're a member, there is, you know, log in. And then when you go, there's also there's a discount already applied for you. So I think you get two hundred two hundred dollars off the elite package. I think it's like fifty dollars off, give or take uh, on the quarterly package. So that's kind of a benefit for being a member. Uh, by the way, there's also a benefit if you've taken the small account class before. OK, and I'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's say that you have done the small account class before. So you probably got a couple of questions. One, I've already done it. Why would I need to do this? Um, you know, kind of like, well, what's in it? You know, what's in it for me? What about, you know, what for doing this again? First of all, this, I would say for this class, it is um, in terms and comparing it to what we've done before. Uh, it's, you know, it's something after, you know, having a couple of years of this under our belt, being able to take all that take the missing pieces and put it together and kind of a, you know, that paint by numbers approach. Um, it, I just kind of look at it as this is the thing that can help, you know, people get over the edge. So if you haven't taken this before, it's a no brainer. If you have, and you're wondering kind of like, okay, well, what are, you know, what are the big differences here? Um, that that's, that's the first thing, but also just to kind of let you know, since you are a member of this too, 
Um, there are additional, I think you'll really like them, kind of bonuses and things that we can, that are going to be added onto this for you as well. And so you can just go ahead and, you know, email us. We'll send out some emails with the information. Uh, but we just want to, you know, we appreciate that you've been with us in the, you know, been with us in the past with that. And, uh, you know, just want to show our appreciation there. Um, hey, Jason, you got to say one thing real quick? Yes, go for it. Uh, okay. Um, so whenever we do that, I always put myself into y'all's shoes. And, and if you've already been purchased a small account secrets in the past, just take a moment to email them and just hear, I promise you, you don't want to miss out. I'll leave it at that. The number, I mean, what's a phone call or email? I say, reach out and see what happens. Well, then just to add on to that really quickly, I know some of you guys have like, I've taken this before. What exactly is different? Well, there's a whole bunch of new components to this. So it is basically like a brand new class. The focus of course is still on potentially growing a small account. But all the lessons that we teach in the class, the strategies, the psychology, the risk, all of that is important really for any size account. And it's wrapped up in a way, uh, one, that we've never presented it to you guys before with you know, a new shiny bow, if you will. So there's a lot of new information in this class. It's basically a brand new class with how we've organized it together. And you're getting a lot of different knowledge bases from JC, myself, and Cody within it. Um, just to clarify that a bit more, not that you guys didn't do that well. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, yeah, it'll be awesome. That's great. And the other thing too, is if you are um, already a member, um, also kind of call in because there's, if you're already a member of small lot, obviously you don't need a year, you know, a, an additional year of it. So call about that too, because you can still attend the classes and everything like that. And there's also, you know, a, something just, you know, when you log in, you'll see something specifically for you as well, which is, which is, it's pretty awesome. Okay. So we talked about the quarterly package. I think we covered that pretty good. I wanted to dump, jump into the annual package and Allison, do you want to talk about this a little bit, especially the office hours with Allison and Cody? Cause I did not want to uh, explain that in a way that maybe wasn't accurate. Absolutely. So, so um, Cody will get a, into a little bit more detail about the boot camp, but just as a quick footnote for that. Um, I saw some questions come up through the chat on will there be live trading? Do we get alerts? And we do have alerts both in the small account mentorship as well as with the class. Um, you'll get that through the chat room respectively. If you have our mobile app, you get the push notifications. And within the boot camp, of course, we'll be teaching you how to set up your own trading plan. We'll be teaching you and match, trying to match you up with your risk tolerance. And it'll also be live during market hours. So the strategies that we both teach in the class, if there's a valid setup that looks good, you know, we'll look to take them together and get those alerts sent out to you. Um, but I did also want to, of course, touch on the office hours. So I know that might confuse some people like, well, we have the boot camp. What's the need for the office hours? Well, the idea behind it is you've been able to take the class, whether you're there live or whether you're watching the recording because you're busy that Saturday. I get it. Everything we do here is recorded. So if you can't make everything. the full day, yeah, everything. <laughs> if you can't make the full day, if you can't make um, just uh, the day at all and you still are very much interested, don't worry. The whole thing is recorded from our live Saturday class and is posted basically immediately. Um, and so the office hours, the idea is you've been able to watch the class, you've been able to attend the boot camp, you've been trading and following along with us some in the mentorship, and then we get to come back together and you really get to dive in and answer questions. Because of course, in the mentorship, we're very much focused on, you know, trading the charts, finding new setups. And so to really get a bit more of that I won't call it one-on-one, -on -one, like Cody said, it's a bit more of a group setting, but to really get that individual attention to your questions, we'll be able to answer them and to dive into more detail on the answers and really focus it. So that way you have this whole rounded out and it will be, you know, a little bit time after the class itself. So you have some time to work on everything yourself and then come back to get those questions answered. And of course, those are also during live market hours. So if we're, you know, explaining something on the chart, answering a question and the setup looks good, We'll still look at potentially taking that trade idea, certainly. Um, and then I also want to focus in the annual package, you get the small account strategy class that I have already pre-recorded. So one, if you do purchase this, um, you already have access to it. It's immediately living out there. You can go and watch it right now if you want it to. Um, but within that strategy class, it's a brand new class. So this is one that I've put together. It's not like an old class that I've done in the past. It's all 
brand new material on the chart setup and entry. And then like Cody hinted at, I do teach two different strategies. Now I do talk about profit recycling. So for those of you who are curious about that, you may not take in one of those classes in the past. It is touched on in the strategy class itself. That's like I said, I, I profit recycling for everything. It's a very diverse strategy. So I was able to once again, apply it to the chart steps and the strategies that we talk about here. But I do also teach about a few other strategies. And for those of you who are brand new to trading, don't fret, right? If you're even like, what's a vertical spread? I go through all of that and teach it and build up into the strategies that we use. So if you're, you know, brand new to calls and puts and like, what are debit spreads? What are credit spreads? All of that is taught within the class. And just so you guys know, you need to sign up by Saturday in order to get access to the pre-recorded class as a bonus. Once the Saturday class happens, um, don't quote me. I think the cutoff time is 3 p.m. Or now it officially is <laughs> for Saturday. But um, yeah, and you, you definitely want to get access to Allison's class. I mean, it's, yeah. So you need to sign up for it by then. Otherwise, I think the normal pricing in the store is 497, and that would be the only place you can get it. And of course, you can't get it in a package deal like this with everything else included for this price. So did want to stress that some, and I'll send it over to. Cody now to talk a little bit more about the mentorship as well as the boot camp. All right. So I'm going to move this over one more. I'm going to put this up real quick. All right. So the boot camp, this is the thing I am most excited about. And the reason I am most excited about this is because ultimately, in my opinion, if you want to be successful at trading, your trading plan needs to match your trading personality. Like, let me ask you all this that are here. Have any of y'all purchased a strategy or trading a strategy, but you're not quite getting the results you expected? If, you, if that's the case, throw up the little hands like, help. Go ahead and hit that little emoji. We'll see those hands if they're out there. Oh, no, I don't want to see them from you, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just imitating. And, <laughs> and the reason I ask that is because theoretically, every single trading plan out there works, right? But the question and variables are, are you applying it to the right market? Is it meeting um, the time that you wish to put towards trading? And is it getting giving you the expectations you thought? And so in the boot camp, what I have laid out, I have an entire trading development plan basically. On uh, day one, we're I'm gonna I have documents, I have six documents that you'll have homework, but that's the thing about trading. You're gonna have to put in work to make it happen. And we'll go from the top down and we'll create your trading plan. Like on day one, we'll do your trading plan development. And then day two, Allison's going to talk about her training and risk um, development as well. And what's really cool is you could actually combine both, combine both. Like I know a training plan is working for me, but it doesn't mean it's going to make sense to you. And so therefore, that is why some people will deviate whenever they take a strategy. They deviate from the plan because it's not me meeting what they're expecting. And on day three with me, I'm going to go over how to journal, track, and adjust your training plan as the market changes. The market does change as we've all experienced the last few years. Right. And how do you identify that a change is occurring and how do you make those adjustments? And and the day four is uh, Allison is going to go over all her strategies and how to apply them. And on day five, the goal there is you're either on team Allison or team Cody. I mean, the choice is yours. <laughs> and she's the dark side. I don't mean to. <laughs> um, but uh, ultimately, by day five. The goal there is for you to have an entire trading plan and a process, a de developmental process for you to become a, your own successful trader. And I'm a, I'm a total dad, but I'm going to steal this from Master Shifu is I don't want to turn you into me. I want to turn you into you. But let's make you the trader you are and help you get there. That's the point of boot camp. And then what's also awesome is the mentorship is as you develop it and work on, if you're there for the year, you have a whole year of me in there guiding you along the way as well, helping you get your questions answered, helping you like, you're like, Hey Cody, this part of my plan isn't working where I've journaled 50 trades and this isn't working. Um, what isn't happening? Great. You know what? Email me your plan and results was evaluate some stuff and get you on the right track. And this is the one and way I really feel that uh, we could really help you. Go ahead, Allison. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just going to add on to that, Cody, because um, I saw a few questions of people asking, like, will I work during the day or how does this work? Well, of course, we're 
putting on our trades during the day. But like I mentioned, we do have a push notification. So if you're busy during the morning when actions being taken or in the afternoon and you still want to follow along, well, you will still get that push notification to your phone as long as you have your app and we'll still be able to access it. And as for what time we're on throughout the day, I know Cody's on a lot during the mornings. I'm on a lot during the afternoon. So if you had to choose a time more often than not once or on the mic, or certainly we're both hanging out in the chat room to where if you have any questions or, you know, you're looking at a trade setup, you want our two cents, we're more than happy to help answer that for you guys um, and review it either on the mic together or at least give you our two cents in the chat for whatever you're looking at doing. Yeah. And there's some context around that too, because I see a lot of questions like, can you do this if you're working full time? You know, and I, I think back to when I work in, you know, corporate America, um, which for me was a very Dilbert kind of experience. And it was on the West Coast. So 6.30 in the morning, you know, I could look at the markets, I could place some limit orders, but then I'd go to work and I really would have no idea like what happened unless I could like call, you know, call, you know, a landline and, and punch in, you know, into my E-Trade account, the stock symbols and listen to a computer, give me a delayed quote on what Micron Technologies was doing. And so today you could be sit sitting in a meeting. It's like you get the push app notification and then you can go to your mobile app on your phone, you know, place the order for the trade and then just kind of go back to whatever you were doing. And th that to me is just, it's mind blowing because that was not my experience in trying to learn how to trade. And so, and then part of it is just, you know, putting a stake in the ground. Like, yeah, this is going to make a difference in my life. I'm going to figure out a way to do it. And it's easier, way easier to do it today than it was, you know, um, you know, frankly, when I always sound like, oh, I had to walk, you know, to school uphill both ways in the snow, <laughs> but you know, we didn't have push notifications. I didn't have a cell phone. So I just think it's easier and it's really just, you know, it's on you to commit to your, to your future. And, you know, if you're ready to do that, these are the, you know, the tools here are there and I, and I, which I, I think it's pretty awesome. But the other thing too, is we are sensitive, like, Hey, it's a small account. Um, and if you're trading a $500 account, sometimes like, oh, wow, this is a five or $600 investment that I need to make. We did work out a deal with PayPal where if you go into the cart and you can check the six month, no interest option. And so basically for six months, you have no payments and no interest. And after six months, there is an interest rate. We have had people do that. And then, you know, they're able to kind of pay it down with uh, the gains that they make when they're trading. Now, obviously that doesn't work for everyone because it, it, you know, that's where part of the psychology and stuff comes in, but that is, I, I always love hearing those stories. And I think that's really great. So um, hopefully at this point, you know, you're like, okay, this is great. This is coming on Saturday. I'm ready to commit. Um, you see the link uh, that's been pushed out there. Also, if you have uh, questions, you can call us, you can email us. Like I said, if you're a former member, there are additional deals for you. Um, you could actually, you could still sign up and still have access to that stuff, uh, which is great. And if you're already a current member, you know, just be on the lookout for emails that'll be coming to you, or of course, reach out uh, to whoever you're talking to. And again, just a reminder here, you know, there's two packages here, a basic and an elite. And with the basic, uh, if you're not sure what to do, do the basic. Uh, I think you could upgrade later if you wanted to. But, you know, again, you're going to get the Saturday class with the three of us. We're going to be talking about all the things that we've been talking about tonight, just in details. You can actually have it, something that you can work with. Um, utility labels, which are really important if you don't have those, those help in terms of picking a stock in terms of things that you want. 90-day uh, access, free access to the ongoing mentorship program. This does include trade alerts, uh, reviews of the trades and things like that. So this makes it possible to do while you're working a full-time job. And then the workbook for that. The elite package is all of that. And then instead of 90 days, you get a full year access plus access to the five-day boot camp that uh, Cody was talking about, plus access to Allison's small account strategy class recordings, which are pretty amazing. You got the office hours that Allison talked about those. And then uh, the bonus sessions where I'll be talking about how to uh, take your trading profits and turn them into exotic animals and use that for tax write-offs <laughs> uh, and joy and wonderment for your family. So um, so that's what we got. Unless if there's any other uh, questions, you know, we're happy to stick around and answer a few questions, but also cognizant of everybody's time. And um you know, do you guys see any questions? That also, we need to, any just questions? a note, JC, really quickly. Um, I know you're using like stone tablets and tin cans to do your trading back in the day, but Man, just to speak, <laughs> just to speak to the uh, aspect of how good it is to trade now. When the, my first daughter came, she was two weeks early. And I, of course, was a new mom. So I was of the mindset that, no, she'll come on time. I have plenty of time to close out my trades. 
Uh, but I was actually in the hospital holding her in one arm and then doing trading in the other arm through my phone app. So technology is a beautiful thing, guys. And you'll still be able to get those alerts. You can still take action on your brokerage platforms, mobile platform. Um, and there are still certainly ways to work around that kind of stuff. So if Cody can do it on a battlefield with no internet and I can do it in a hospital. You guys can do it too. <laughs> Allison, I can see the doctor going, push. And you're going, no, confirm and send. Five <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Right>, four seconds. <laughs> that, that's what I was going to address you. I see a lot of questions as far as like, what about the trades? If I'm working, everything is pre-planned in this, uh, in the way I'm doing things in the trading plan. Like we know where we're getting in, where we're going out, you can set your limit order and it works for you. That's honestly kind of like the best way. And honestly, being overseas, that kind of helped me probably not have to worry about it. I would enter it. I'm accepting the max risk. I have my parameters. And then it, my target was either, either filled while I wasn't at my computer or um, the next day I'm like, oh, okay, I got to get out of this. And that's probably the best thing. If you're at work, it's good because you don't need to sit in front of the computer 24 seven. That's the goal there. You don't want to trade and be in front of the computer all day. You just want to be able to get in, place your orders and let, the, let them work for you. But yes, that's it. And then yeah. in regards to trading platforms, I think we all use either some of the same platforms like Tasty Trade or Thinkorswim, but we also use different platforms. Like for example, I'm currently using Moomoo for the $500 challenge. So really whatever platform allows you to trade, trade options and trade option spreads, you should be able to follow along and still participate in these strategies. It just depends what your preference is on brokerage platform. Yeah, it is. We're, we are broker agnostic. I mean, we, we gravitate towards Thinkorswim, like TradeStation, um, Tastyworks, and a few other, mostly because our it's our tools are on our. But we also have a lot of people like E-Trade, Fidelity, you know, different, uh, Schwab, you know, different, uh, not, not necessarily. So it's, we're broker agnostic. We, we don't, we don't, we don't care who you use, you use who you want. Uh, we just kind of provide like, hey, here's some tools. And the beauty of it is, is since there's alerts being sent out, you know, initially you don't necessarily, you could just, you could follow the alerts on, you know, whatever brokerage you're using. So there's not, there's an easy stair-stepping kind of a learning curve, I think, is the way I kind of look at it like that. Most excellent. <laughs> Looking through the questions, seeing if anything's popping up. Yeah. And I think that's, um, you know, so I guess one question is, is like, hey, I, if I can't take the, if I can't attend the Saturday, when are you guys doing this class again? And that's a good question. We're not. So this is what, what I always say on that situation is like, we get it. Saturdays sometimes are busy. Um, what's going to happen is once this class is over and it goes into the store, A, it's going to be more expensive. B, you're not going to get all the different bonuses that, that are coming with it. So what I would do if I were you is I would get it now, lock in the lower prices, and then it'll be recorded. You can watch the recording you know, at your leisure, and then you know, you'll start getting alerts and things like that. So you may not be ready to go on Saturday. Maybe it's a month away or something like that. Uh, but I encourage you to at least take advantage of the stuff and get it because you know, after it's over, you know, not everything's going to be available. And so that's just, it's just, it's the package, you know, this is the thing that'll get you going. And uh, if this resonates with you, but the timing is not quite right, I would encourage you just to grab it. You know, that way you're making the commitment, you're putting a stake in the ground and then you can, you know, get it going when you've got, it's what I've seen with stuff like that too, is like, oh, this sounds great. And then it's a year later and, you know, a person hasn't done anything yet. So you're no, you've moved zero steps towards your dream um, versus like, here it is kind of teed up for you and you can just kind of lock it in and get it done. And I, I see another question out there asking like what a typical trade is, what the typical risk is. And it really depends per trader. Um, but for myself, just as an example, I have trades out there where there's only like $50 of risk, right, per contract. So you can make them, you know, depending on the strategy and the setup that you're looking at it, you can keep your risk as small as you want. And I saw somebody else mention that they're doing a $700 account. That's great. I do 500 for the $500 challenge, you can really start small. You might be a little bit more picky and choosy about what trade you jump into. But the idea here is you don't have to risk that full amount into one trade idea. You can break it apart and do multiple trades to still try and be able to grow it overall. So there's that too. Absolutely. Good stuff. All right. Well, I think that is everything. So I'll, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up and call it. Uh, thank you guys, everybody, for joining us. Um, obviously, for those of you that are members, we'll be in the room tomorrow, Friday, if you have any questions. And then, of course, please reach out uh, to us via email or phone. Uh, keep a lookout for emails coming through if you have any questions. But remember that Saturday will sneak up on us. And <laughs> if this is something that you're ready to do, we'd love to see you there. And, um, 
you know, with bells on, ready to go. All right. You guys, gals, have a great evening. Cody, Allison, great hanging out with you tonight. And then uh, see you guys yes, tomorrow sir. in the chat rooms. May the trade be with you, my fellow Jedi. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>